Hi all, this is a quick video where we're going to go back to basics and really do a deep dive into the flange command. I just realised it's not something I'd uh, actually done before, so let's jump right in and uh, see where it takes us. So I'm going to start the flange command and I'm going to reset the dialog. And we're, we're at the default settings now. So clearly for flange I just need to select an edge to kick things off. and. We're going to go through each one of these options and actually see what they do for us. Now, I can multi-select just by clicking other edges and shift collect, click to go back again. I can adjust the width option. So let me just deselect that and just come onto this edge here. So this is a full edge. I can do at center and it creates me a flange at the center. I can do at end and it's asking me well which end would you like and we can do that here by a selection and obviously it then gives us uh, a width option which we can actually drag on screen and adjust. We can go from end so we've now got two options we've got the width of the flange itself and we've got the distance from the selected point and from both ends. I can select in from one end and also select in from the other and adjust both those values. So that gives us all of the width options. So obviously length, we can adjust the length either on screen grab handle or type in values. And we can adjust the angle with the on screen and of course type in values for that too. And then we get to the length reference. So by default, the le length reference is inside. Measure the distance from the virtual intersect of the tab face that are adjacent to the inner bend face to the top of the flange. So we're talking about this face here, this edge to the top. So where the gold arrow is indicating, this is the length. If we look at outside, is taking from the outside again follow what the gold arrow is showing from the outside to the top web is the length of the web so you've created the flange you've got the bend and then you're defining the length from the web and then finally tangent well this looks just the same as outside so if we adjust the angle for example you can actually see I square that up we're taking the value from this outside tangential edge to, to the end of the flange. Okay, so that's all the length reference. Um, insets, right, so for inset options, just to make things quick and easy, here's one I prepared earlier. And I've got a flange here, and each one of these flanges has a different inset option. And if we bring up the flange command, we can see we've got a range of different inset options. From material inside outer mold line is the first one. And what that really means is, if I just switch this around, is the material on the outside lines up with the outer mold line point between the two planar surfaces. For material inside, the which is this second one, the material is inside from the selected point. In this case, we've selected this top edge and the material is inside. Material outside, again, similarly from the selected edge, which is this top edge, the material is on the outside and finally bend outside from the selected edge, the bend is outside and runs round. So that's all the different uh, inset options and give you four different possibilities depending on the design intent. So let's go back to our flange command. So we've done all of those. Let's just create another one here and look at offset. You've got another handle, you've got the handle for the length, you've got the handle for the angle, and you've got the handle for the offset. So we can drag that out. Let me just make that a center 
we can drag that out and have a offset which adds material or we can drag that in and of course as you drag that in it automatically creates the relief. Okay moving on to some more detail now let's have a look in geometry properties use geometry mirror and pattern right so let me explain what's going on with this one I've created a flange at the center of this edge okay this option is turned off if I now mirror the feature and I'm going to mirror that between this face and this face okay in the center of the part we're going to mirror this feature onto this edge and if I OK that you can say well hang on they're not mirrored they don't line up well we're mirroring a feature which is at center this is now at the center of its new defined edge if we come back to here and use the geometry mirror and OK that then we get a true geometric mirror rather than a feature mirror so that's what the geometry mirror and pattern toggle is all about let's just get rid of those and come back and move on to the next step here so mitre if you've got two flanges together let me just make that a full and a full and we turn on mitre we automatically mitre those together if you want anything more than a basic join then start looking at the corner close corner and three bend corner commands to give you more options this is a very simple option where if I for example taper this in let me just put the bend outside there we go okay and this creates you an enclosed both remove material and add material to give you the mitre option okay moving on I don't need the mitre anymore bend parameters the bend radius and the neutral factor so the neutral factor or a K factor to define the flattened length of a bend is taken primarily from the part properties and in this case I'm just using the bend definition method of neutral factor and we've got a bend radius this gets a little bit more complicated and powerful when you start using material selection but for the basics here if I change this bend radius to say 5 and the neutral factor to 0.4 for example this can all be driven by material selection but if we come in and create our flange you can see I've got 5 and 0.4 here and the 5 radius because of my settings is not allowing me to create it but here we go you can on an individual basis on an individual feature override these by clicking on the equals and using a local and changing that away from the, the standard that's defined within the part properties as you can with the neutral factor okay that's been parameters let's move on again now and look at relief again I'll create a center here we'll go bend outside and you can see that it creates a square bend relief I can change this to a round bend relief and I can change the depth and the width so the depth of the bend relief and the width of the bend relief for both sides simultaneously we do not have an option to define a different relief on either end of a flange these are driven by customer defaults and or preferences and again I can localize it for this specific feature I can extend the relief where necessary and include relief in width right what does that actually mean let's take a look at a full width flange in this area here now what you can see is created the flange the width of the selected edge but it's removed some material away because I've got this relief if I include relief in the width 
it reduces the flange width to include the relief on either side. And of course, if I do this on a on an end, obviously it uh, it honors one side and creates the the flange width on the other. So pretty powerful there. So let's take a look at the next option here. And we're going to look at the relief option, corner relief. So I'm going to create two flanges together here. And what we can see, if I have no relief, then no relief is, is generated. The, the bends are just created with nothing between them. If I turn the corner relief to bend only, it just relieves the material in the bend area. If I go bend and face, it clears everything out from the bend and the face. And finally, bend face chain. If there's a, a complex contour flange or some additional geometry beyond this, it will continue that material removal for the full length of the flange. We then come down to set. So if I want to add a number of flanges within a single feature, but have different parameters for each one we can do. So I can add a flange, which is full width, length 20, angle 90 in one feature. So we have this one feature, 19. If I add a new set, I can add another one and define different properties. I can add another one and again, well actually no, let's, let's go in a different direction. Let's pick the top edge and this one I'm going to have a different length. Everything is still within the single feature. So a little bit more flexibility there. You might find it easier to have these as separate features or you may want them all within the same feature. And that brings us down to match face. So what does match face actually mean? If I want to create a flange and I want to align this flange face to some other geometry, and here I've got a coordinate system, I can use the match face option and specify a plane. The plane can have offset and this, let me reset and do that again. Match face until selected, there we go. And that will define the flange based on the selected reference face or plane. Now some of these options I can do multi-select, some of them I can't. So let's have a look at what that means. I'm going to create a flange on both these edges here at the same time and look at my width option at center. Okay, no problem. At end. So at end is not going to work. Width option supported for multiple base edges. Width option not supported with multiple base edges. Use full or at center width options or select a single edge. So obviously things get a little bit complicated with a specified point. If you have multiple edges, I need multiple points. So we just exclude that one. I can do a full or I can do an at center. Let me just make that width five so you can see both of them together. There we go. Interestingly, because of the width of the edge I've selected here, the relief is taking away the material completely. Let me just show you. There we go. We can see that the material is being taken away completely there. So I think I've covered everything on the flange command. Hopefully this has been of some help if you're wondering what all of those options are and um, just drop some questions in the comments if you have any.